Finally, Cole is right about one thing. Bianca Belair and Jade Cargill are a superhero like tag team. Bianca is Captain Marvel and Jade is She-Hulk, the present-day Disney versions I may add. They fit each of their formulas to a T. Triple H watched these products and went wow, this garbage is gonna make me so much money if I do it as well. I have made separate videos about both women's wrestlers, but essentially, they've had little to no opportunities to prove themselves as characters, but instead, executives accepted them as the face of the company without even having to prove their worth or their value as marketable entities. More specifically, Bianca Danvers is Mary Sue with no weaknesses, and Jade Walters is green as grass. They both depreciate everyone. Asuka used to be a top commodity talent and now she's like just another body on the roster after working with and losing countless times to Bianca. It's going to be amusing to see those obnoxious neckbeards chant you deserve it to two women that were handed everything the moment they walked into the door. Yes, both of them never had to work for their spots. They were handed everything and got to take shortcuts that other women who've been there longer haven't been allowed to take. Casey Catanzaro has been with the company for nearly six years now. She's been a celebrity due to her being on American Ninja Warrior and has garnered a ton more publicity than Jade Cargill has. But for some reason, Jade Cargill gets to keep her name, but Catanzaro has to change hers. It doesn't make sense. I'd love to hear Triple H explain why this is, but more than likely it's a secret he would rather keep to his grave. And for that matter, Bianca's real name is Bianca Blair, and they just added an E to her last name. As I said in my Bianca video, it's not a problem that they're black women. It's a problem that being black women has to be the most important thing about them. Triple H does not see character. He sees color and race and decides that counts as character. He's had 30 years to work under the most influential mind in the history of the business, and he's learned nothing about what makes a character marketable. There were many successful black women that Vince cultivated. Jacqueline, Jazz, Layla, Alicia Fox, Sasha Banks, but Triple H wants to pretend as if they all don't exist and that Bianca and Jade are the ones that break these imaginary barriers in the industry. They weren't even the first pair of black women to hold the tag team titles. Yet the first question they ask on press conferences is about their race and how important their race is for young black girls. Genius, your demographic isn't only young black girls. You don't make your product just for one audience. I don't recall The Rock existing just for one audience. It's possible for black wrestlers to inspire all audiences, and it's also possible for any wrestler to inspire black audiences. This whole identity politics thing is garbage in 2024, yet it's rampant across all WWE programming today. The LWO is another act in WWE today that has created more problems than solutions. If you're a Hispanic wrestler, and you either get called up from NXT or return to the company, you automatically go there like segregation. You can't be your own brand, you have to adopt this failed, near 30-year-old dead, worthless brand that has no reason to still exist. And not like the LWO has accomplished anything in the two years it's existed. Nothing has happened to this stable aside from members turning heel and splitting into another stable. They have not won titles, they have not created compelling angles, it's just we're the Hispanic group. Carlito has been a far bigger star than this, so Triple H can't tell me there's no way for all these wrestlers to get storylines on their own. He just doesn't know how to book. It's not that damage control has haunted poor little special Bianca for the past two years. He just doesn't know how to create compelling storytelling and push anyone else on the roster. Granted, Charlotte got injured and Shotzi got injured, the latter which was a thousand percent preventable, might I add, but it was Triple H's idea to greenlight damage control, it was his idea to create the War Games PLE, and go two straight years having the match involve both Bianca and damage control. Going back to Bianca and Jade Cargill, the only way you can make this duo actually compelling is by embracing their characters on the nose, like the Mr. McMahon character. They should be called special treatment. They should play off the fact that they're privileged and handed everything. They might as well try to capitalize off the fact. As for being tag team champions, I guess you can consider that a plus if it means they're going to do nothing in the time they'll hold onto those belts, so that other wrestlers can get the spotlight. If these belts have existed all this time and Triple H hasn't done anything to make them meaningful, what makes you think gifting them to the Disney Marvel twins is going to change anything? 
why should I believe him this time? The only way the tag titles is going to get any prestige is if they scrapped one of the singles titles on one of the shows and replaced it with the tag titles. It wouldn't even matter at this point if Bailey wasn't women's champion. A babyface milk toast Bailey as champ does nothing for the product. If the women's tag titles were the EE title for women on SmackDown, maybe it could actually compel management to make a real tag team division and create real storylines that involve four women rather than two. Of course you could still have rivalries involving just two women, but for the past five years these titles only exist just so fans don't bitch. That's why.